Greetings, Uncle Traveling Matt here, uh, reporting on another day of my uh, trip in Bulgaria. I'm stuck in a traffic jam now, so I have been in this traffic jam for about half an hour, maybe more. It's horrible. So I thought this is a good time to do this. This is about yesterday. Yesterday, which was a far better day than today, or at least than today has been so far. Um, so yesterday we woke up in Varna again and um, we had a day up in the northeast of the country. Uh, what we did in the morning, I met um, Mr. Popov again, but also met uh, Pavel Marinov, who was uh, an old colleague uh, at the school. And the three of us got together, drank coffee, and just had a chat. And it was good. It was good. It was very good. Uh, and he's good. And yeah, it was nice. Then uh, about midday, um, met with um, Alex. And we drove up along the coast road, it was quite busy, not as busy as this, but still quite busy, to uh, a place called Bansko. No, not Bansko, Baltic. My brain's not working because of this traffic jam. So we drove up to this place called Baltic. Now, Baltic, Baltic is, is really quite an amazing uh, place. I mean, it's a pretty town anyway, but the, the reason why people go there is it's the site of uh, Queen Marie's um, summer palace and Queen Marie was Queen of Romania in the uh, interwar years uh, died in I think 1936 and what she did is she built this palace uh, by the sea in Balchik and of course remember at that time Balchik because it was in southern Dobruja was in Romania and I have to say, walking around it, and I've been a couple of times before, but I, it makes me proud to be English, which I'm not very often these days, certainly not since Brexit. I've felt a bit ashamed of where I come from, but this makes me really proud to be English. And you might say, well, why would looking at a palace in Bulgaria that used to be in Romania by a Romanian queen make you proud to be English? But uh, Queen Marie was a member uh, of the English nobility and she was one of those wonderful eccentric characters that England seems to throw up quite regularly and um, she uh, she built this palace it's it's part of that like kind of tradition of gardens and quirky architecture that you know Port Merion uh, in Wales is from the same tradition and um, also nearer to where I live at Biddulph Grange Gardens in Staffordshire and it's that kind of very whimsical and very romantic kind of idea so the palace there's not actually a palace there's lots of villas scattered about and they're all built to look like traditional houses from the area and then they're linked by these wonderful kind of fairy tale gardens that take their inspiration from various gardens around the world so there's hints of the Alhambra in places but also you know Italian gardens um, there's some terrace, terraces that are based on Italian gardens and and also of course traditions in the Near East um, in Romania so there's a little uh, Orthodox chapel in there the main palace building which is slightly bigger than the others looks like a bit like a mosque it, it has a minaret on it, but it looks like a crossing a mosque and a national revival house and a and a, a an Orthodox church. And the dome actually hides the hammam. Um, and it, it really is wonderful. And I've been before, so I wasn't that excited about going, but I, I thought it would be Alex's kind of place, and it was. But um, but I'd forgotten how how wonderful it is, and it really was. A very very pleasant uh, hour or two that we spent wandering around my only problem was the amount they charge to go in these days is horrendous so they charge 15 lever and like normally a museum is six or ten right so they're charging 15 and then another 15 to go into the main building and then three for parking and and I just thought that was oh, I mean the three for parking by the way you pay per person not per car so or 
I mean, or maybe it was six for parking and we paid three. I don't know. Anyway, either way, I, it was horrendously expensive. And I think it reflects badly on Bulgaria for trying to fleece tourists that way. But it is an amazing place. And it is well kept and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. So, okay, there we are. Um, then after that, um, we went... Um, we went to a place, now I'm going to say this wrong, I'm sure, it's Obrochiste, I think it's, uh, it's called. This is a place I'd been years ago, because I'd read about it in Philip Ward's um, very comprehensive, yet not particularly interesting, book, Bulgaria Travel Guide, which was kind of like one of the few books you could get about Bulgaria in the 80s and 90s. And... He he travelled around then in a, in a car. He drove from Britain and he travelled in a car around Bulgaria. And he went to this place and it's it's a teke. It's a it's a, a Bektashi tomb and and teke complex, uh, very much like Demir Baba. Um, now I went to have a look at it when I lived uh, in, in Varna, and I I took the bus to Albena, which is a tourist resort and then walked about three kilometers and when I got there it was shut but at the time he, although it's a Muslim complex it had been it had a big cross on the door and it, it's like the church had taken it over which you know like I can understand why they might want to do it but then you know don't don't complain about when you know Muslims turn Hagia Sophia into a mosque which I think is really wrong um, because you, if you're doing the same thing you know and um, I think all churches should be churches and all mosques should be mosques and that's that. However, there was more to it than uh, I initially thought. So I never got to see it. And, and near to it was a ruined uh, building that I assume was a mosque or something. But now it's been done up and it is open to the public. And the ruined building, it, it was... Um, what do they call it? Um, I forget the name of the, the, the complex, but it was like a large area where pilgrims could stay. And also there was a kitchen, so they could do, you know, a bit like in the Sikh Gurdwara, like communal meals there for pilgrims. And um, this building now, they, they've now put a roof on it, and they're probably at great expense. And it's got this huge roof on it, and it's this wonderful old building. And um, we, we were shown in, and um, they... they they were they use it to show videos of uh, you know Baltic's history and stuff. So we, we watched a load of short videos, all the all youth funded, um, about Baltic's history. But it was a wonderful space, and I think they have cultural events in there. And that. It, it, it's really quite cool. And then it was onto the actual tomb itself, which was like to me about little. I mean, it'd been done up, so um, you know. It, it wasn't quite as atmospheric. But what was interesting, so it, it was from a Bektashi um, Baba, you know, one of their holy men. And I think he was a precursor to Demi Baba. I think Demi Baba was his disciple. But um, there was also this, like, myth, probably untrue, that they'd knocked down a Christian monastery or Christian church to build it. Uh, dedicated to Saint um, Atanas and he yeah, he's a real figure who lived in the region um, ages ago um, but there's also a story about a Christian boy called Atanas who uh, fell in love with a Muslim girl and obviously that's forbidden and so they either I can't remember that he well they're not sure if he killed himself or the family killed him. And so it's it's a bit of a shrine for tragic lovers. And you know me, I'm a bit of a sucker for that. So I found it a very powerful place. And I wrote a poem there. And I thought it was quite a good one as well. So that's that. Um, then after there, we drove to Dobridge. Now Dobridge uh, used to be called, it's had lots of names. It had a different name. It was Hadji something or other than the, Turkish time and then in the communist time it was um, Tolbukhin which was named after a Russian general but it's now Dobrich um, after some ancient king or something of the region uh, and um, it, it's a very it's a very out of the way quite a poor agricultural town I went there when I was uh, 
when I was living in Varna because I wanted to go on the train uh, line and it, I found it really poor and really really a bit of a dump to be honest but I remember there was a nice old bit and there was some you know quite um, striking communist architecture so, uh, so when we, we got there, there that what we did find there was this amazing monument to the foundation of the Bulgarian state in 681 on the edge of town that I'd not seen before so we stopped and photographed that then we went to the centre parked up and had a look around and I mean it still does look a bit sorry for itself but it, it really is something because it's got um how can I say it's got this huge square that is like communist modernism you know and it's it, 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 it's it's got like enormous hotels like two enormous hotels like who the hell would ever want to stay in Dobridge I don't know what the communists were thinking of when they did that uh, but it, it's like this 60s vision but then hermetically sealed off behind this is the old Dobridge quarter and it's it's gorgeous and there's this little old like national revival houses and all that kind of stuff and we stopped and um I think the place is called the Sladkaritsa, where they, uh, where you you can get like lokom or Turkish delights and traditional style coffee, which we did, and we had a we had a coffee there. And the one was really friendly, and it was nice because we were literally the only tourists there. But of course, the reason why I went there was not for tourism. Uh, it's because, and I have talked about this before, but um, years ago, 2015, I went to uh, Norway to Oslo. And I stayed in a well, the cheapest hotel I could find, um, and the, it was uh, it was I think it was called City Centre Hostel, and I I met a chap there who was who was actually kind of living there, and he was like a postgrad student called Alf Eric, and we 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 became friends. We're still in touch today, and uh, quite an intellectual guy, and um, he was he was he was living there because it was cheaper than student dicks. But also a lot of the city's prostitutes lived there. And he got friendly with a few of them. And one of them was a young lady called Galena and I actually met her because she was on the same floor as me and when I was going out it was a shared bathroom. When I was going out to the bathroom she came back with a towel wrapped around her and said hi. Um so I have met Galena but only only fleetingly. And anyway, um a few months after I went to see him, um you know, Alf got into touch with me and he said he was very upset because his friend had been murdered. And, and this lady, Galina Sandeva, had been murdered. She was a prostitute. She was murdered by a client who turned out, because they caught him, to be a, a very wealthy and privileged Norwegian man and, and who's now out of prison uh, for the crime. And um, it really looked upset at Alf, Eric, and he said, could I write her story? And I was, well, it's a bit difficult, because I don't know her, but what I did is I researched her, and I found out she was Bulgarian, and actually, Galina wasn't even her name, she was, uh, she was Roma, but she was Muslim, and they, she, she didn't use her real name, she used uh, her Muslim name, she, she used a, a Bulgarian name, and, and I know, like, back in the 80s and whatever, there were name-changing campaigns for the Muslims, and uh, so, but I thought, well, I thought that I'd finished and nobody changed the name now. And I spoke to friends of mine, like Bulgarian Muslim friends of mine, and they were like, um, oh, no, no, they, some people still do do it and they have two names, particularly the Roma, uh, because they're so prejudiced against. And um, so I, you know, I, I really felt for it. And, and of course, like, she taught me something. So I wrote this story about her, uh, for Alf, and then. In 2016, uh, Boris straight after this, writing the story, I was going to Bulgaria anyway, so I went to her grave, which was fresh and new, and uh, laid some flowers on there for him. But I thought, you know what, I want to visit her grave again, and I I went up there, and uh, so I went to this vast municipal graveyard on the edge of town by the by the 1960s TV tower, and uh, you know and. It's all like this space age vision gone wrong, Dobridge is. It's a wonderful place. Well worth going. Uh, and then, um, and then went went to a grave, and it was all overgrown. It was like a jungle, and I, I thought that was really sad. And of course, a bit like when I went to visit Banaz Mahmud's uh, grave last summer, I thought, well, here's something I can do. This is, this is a prayer I can make, a practical prayer. 
a Martha prayer rather than a Mary one maybe, but a prayer nonetheless. And so what I did is I tidied up her grave and then I, the flowers I bought and the candle I bought, I lit them and said a few words and then went on and, and it felt good, it felt good. And it's nice, I think, that Galena is being remembered. And um, so that was that. And then we drove back um, through the countryside, very quiet rural roads, a lot better than they used to be, I'll tell you. And um, then we went to Varna in the evening and we went for a meal. And we went for a fish meal, and, and uh, Alex uh, suggested somewhere um, that was, <clears throat> it was now, how can I say this? It, it was in Varna Port. Now I thought it was just one of those places on the waterfront where they always were, but they've opened this whole new bit of Varna up that I'm, I'm sure nobody could go to when I was there. Certainly, I never went. And I explored the city pretty thoroughly. And it's in the old port area. And I think it was off limits in those days. Um, but um, they they were in this massive area. And it's actually in the ferry terminal. With restaurants and, and bars and stuff. And a huge car park. And um, so we went out there. So it was a bit of honour I'd not seen before. And we went to this fish restaurant called Captain Coops. It's a bit unfortunate because Captain Coops is also the name of like the uh, greasy spoon down the road from me and so I couldn't get that out of my mind when I went and then we went to Captain Cook's had a wonderful fish meal and then uh, with a great bottle of rice thing and then on the way back stopped for a cocktail uh, to celebrate the end of our, our trip together and that was that what a wonderful day unlike today but that is well for the next video I'll travel map Keep traveling.